Well, there's just two sections left to this particular unit of your MAR program. As I think you can already tell, time goes very quickly, and so the use of your time is important as you go through this particular program. Now, this week, though the lesson is very short, it will be extremely important By the time that you've completed this lesson, you'll have turned in a pretty detailed outline of your paper. Um, that's going to help me to see what you've accomplished so far. Hopefully, you will have completed chapters one and probably two of your paper. And then we're going to review uh, all of the components of your paper or learn how to do that so that before you turn your paper in, you're pretty sure that you've done your very best work and uh, it's going to look great. Okay, before we go any farther, let me dispel an ancient myth. And this one goes back a long, long way. Here's what the myth says. I am able to write a super research paper by sitting down at my computer and cranking the final copy out in just one night. Boy, this one goes back to Socrates and Plato, I think. Well, maybe they didn't have computers, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if they had thought through very carefully what they were going to put down before they started to write on that very precious uh, scroll or papyrus that they were using at the time. Now we need to be sure that we understand that this is not an overnight process. I'm going to share with you the four R's of research writing. Research, write, review, revise. Okay so I kind of cheated a little bit on the right. Anyway, we want to be sure that uh, you have done good research, that your writing is um, above uh, the basic standard. Uh, we'll do that by carefully reviewing what you've written already and if there are mistakes you're going to revise it. Let's talk about how we're going to go through this process. All right, let's ask some important questions that uh, might be necessary for us to do a good review. First, did you finish your paper in time to set it aside? I've oftentimes found that by setting it aside and giving it a rest and then going back to it, it's as though mistakes almost pop off the page. Uh, perhaps it's a misspelled word. Um, or perhaps it's a phrase uh, that doesn't make any sense or a little bit of research that doesn't quite fit into the logic. By setting it aside and giving it a fresh eye, I'm able to catch something that I might not have been able to catch before. Sometimes I'll have someone else look over my work. In fact, I like to do that. My wife is a good proofreader, and so I sometimes turn it over to her and say, mark it up all you want, and she'll go back and catch something that I might have overlooked just because I'd seen it and I'd written it, I'd looked at it so many times. Also, have you run a spell checker or a grammar checker? And almost every word program has this available. Be sure if words are underlined with red or green, um, you take note of that and see if it's something that's a mistake. Now understand that these are computer generated and so not all the time will they catch every mistake and sometimes when they catch a mistake it may not be wrong at all. And so you have to be the final judge and uh, you may need a grammar book or a dictionary in order to help you through this process. Then you want to be sure that all major divisions are labeled with all capital the ways that we talked about in the SBL uh, book or in uh, the Weimeister uh, book and are all subdivisions and subdivisions and sub-subdivisions um, 
put in the proper place with the proper heading and style in order to make sure that our outline is very clear not only to us but to our readers as well. You're going to be finding that although you submit your paper electronically you still will need to use the formatting that is uh, recommended in the SBL Handbook of Style. That includes the formatting for the footprints or footnotes, uh, the bibliographic cards, uh, the double spacing, uh, the margins uh, as much as possible. You'll be able to uh, better put your paper together and print it off later if you followed those guidelines. And quite frankly, I'm going to be fairly picky about looking at those simply because if you know how to do it and have the opportunity to do it now you're going to be able to do it correctly all the way through your uh, program of study. Let's uh, talk a little bit about the different sections that we're going to be looking at. First of all we want to look at the introduction. Did you identify a critical issue? This is the thesis statement. That thesis statement should be right up front, should be very visible, and uh, should give us some uh, breadth of what it is that we're going to uh, cover. Um, it'll talk about the limitations of that coverage. It'll talk to us uh, about uh, the hypothesis or what we believe to be the answer. Um, it'll define our audience and then define what we uh, hope uh, that we will find as a conclusion. Now, understand that just because we put that down up front doesn't necessarily mean that that's what we will find, but this is what we anticipate finding as we go through the study. We'll also review the body of the paper. Are all of our headings following the clear outline? Are biblical references absolutely essential and theological references cited as uh, they're supposed to be in the SBL Handbook of Style? Um, are all references that are obtained from an outside source given appropriate footnote designation? And again, don't try to slip something in as your work that really belongs credited to somebody else. That's good research is being able to note and you're going to want to go back to that and find that material later on and to do so um, you're going to need to have a good reference there. Is all the material that's included necessary to prove or disprove your original thesis or hypothesis? Lots of times we find something that's great and we want to stick it in there, slide it in there but if it's not necessary, you need to pull it out. Padding your paper with extraneous materials really isn't beneficial at all. Let's also look at the conclusion section. Is there a concise review of your findings? Be sure that you're only reviewing those things that you talked about in the body of the paper. This is not a place for new information. Are your conclusions logical? Is there a suggestion for other related studies that could be conducted? And although this is optional, it's also very useful to have because you might be reminded of something else that you want to study and already have a basic study done if you've put that kind of information in on this particular paper. Finally, we want to look at those other pages that need to be included in the research paper. For instance, does our title page follow the format that is used by the university? And I want to recommend that you go back to chapter 13 of the Weimeister uh, book and take a good look at what the title page looks like, like it spells it out very clearly, follow those guidelines, uh, because I'm going to be looking for that and checking 
uh, for that because that will be the kind of uh, title page you'll probably use all the way through uh, your studies here. Is there a table of contents that not only lists the page where the introduction and the body and the conclusion are, are listed, but also includes things like where your illustrations are, what your appendices are? Are those appendices that you provide supportive of the materials of the body of your document? Listen, if you don't cite an, uh, a body of information in the research uh, paper, don't put it in as an appendix. It's not needed. It's not wanted. And in fact, as you're putting your appendices in, you put them in the order that they occur within the paper. For instance, the first uh, body of information that you refer to is Appendix A and the second B and so forth. Do all the references, both footnote and bibliographic, follow the formatting in Chapter 7 of the SBL Handbook of Style? And just be reminded that there are several different kinds of uh, styles uh, out there, so be sure that you don't make an assumption. Use and reference those uh, handbook styles from the SBL that are recommended for this particular program. All right, this lesson hasn't been long at all, but it's very important. You're going to need, I know, to keep working on your paper this week and next, and you want to, uh, to be sure that when you turn it in, it's correct. And so that's why I went ahead and reviewed with you some of the checkpoints that we need to go over now so that next week when we get together and we talk again, it's going to be a simple process to just do a quick review, and then you'll be able to turn your uh, papers in. Don't turn them in yet. There's one more piece to the assignment to do, and you'll need to do that next week after you've completed the rest of this study. Well, look at your rap sheet. Check out uh, the material that's there, and uh, we'll talk to you next week.